I also recommend whatever your bait is in your area. If it's you know bigger baits, then throw the bigger swim baits on here or the bigger uh, worms. If it's smaller baits and you have you know the small bait fish, the one or two inch, make sure you match the hatch. It's the same way as if you were fishing a spinner bait or a crankbait or anything. You want to make sure that your baits are matching what you're fishing with. But a lot of times you can go down through there, you can catch them on a crankbait, you can catch them on a spinner bait or something like that. Then you come back through the same area and you'll catch fish that the first time through you might catch two or three pounders. You'll come back through and you'll catch four and five pounders on a bait like this. And it's just it's more opportunistic, I think, for the for the fish. They see a small uh, group of bait, it looks more realistic to them, it looks better. They they seem to it's something that they have trouble resisting, I believe. It's just it's a very, you know, do a comfortable cast for you when you're casting it. Make sure that you're not casting it so far out that you're overrunning your spool. You know, this thing, as you see, it flips right out there easy. I mean, what is that, 20 yards or something? And it, it'll go right to the end of the tank because it, it's so heavy. But also, when you're counting it down, I recommend you get like six, eight feet of water, which you know how much weight or water you're in. Throw it out there and count to yourself 1,001, 1,002, until it hits the bottom. So you can get an idea because different baits, different heads are gonna make it have a different fall rate. So when you're trying to catch fish offshore and you're catching them on ledges and things like that and they're 25, 30 feet deep, and you're not exactly sure if the bait's there yet, and a lot of us aren't good enough to read our graph, I mean, unless you're dropping it straight down next to the boat, I recommend do that. Just do a practice cast with, with whatever baits you have on it and count it down, you know, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. When it hits the bottom, you know, okay, it takes three seconds to go eight feet. You look at your graph, the fish are down there, you know, 16 feet, then you know. When you cast out, count yourself six seconds. You know, 1,001, 1,002, until you get six seconds, you know you're at that mark. So then you can start reeling it in and just don't get crazy. And just, it, if you use six pound braid when you're fishing, a lot of times you can pull this rig out or whatever, get it hung in. You're going to lose a few, but more time out, you'll be able to pull it out. It's the open hooks. When you use those, that's when it gets to be difficult. Shallower water, a lot of times you've got to keep the rod tip down just like when you're fishing a crankbait because you want to turn around and make sure that fish is not jumping because with it having five hooks, and if you use the five open hooks, when that fish jumps at the end of the cast out there, he's spinning and slinging five hooks. So he has a chance of getting hooked in the side, things like that. So I recommend keeping your rod tip down Keep a nice, slow, steady retreat on them instead of trying to fight them and go crazy. Just, you know, nice and slow. And just keep reeling like you're trying to retrieve the bait. And that way, keep the fish from jumping and you don't get them hooked to the side. You don't lose any fish that way. Um, and also, you'll have a better chance of getting multiple fish on, on a cast if you turn around and you discontinue your retrieve after you hook a fish. It's a lot of people, what they're doing when they break these arms, is they're loading up, you know, like when you're catching a, a fish on a jig or something like that, or, or they come and hit a crankbait, a lot of people slam them. If you do that with this rig, you distort the rig, you change the uh, the way it looks, you have it. It scares the other fish away. I think it, it, when you get a school of fish and they bite it, when you turn around and you sink that hook, then that alarms them, and they'll back off and you won't get multiple hookups. Like I said, just throw it out there. Just continue to reel that thing nice and steady as the, as the fish load up on it and you'll, you'll get a lot a lot more fish, be a lot more fun for you, you you'll lose a heck of a lot less rigs that way. But uh, that's pretty much it. Has anybody got any questions about it or anything that they're wondering about and maybe I can answer them? Excuse me? A wire leader? I, I, don't, I don't throw a wire leader, I don't recommend it. Oh, these wires here? Now, nah, well, this one has a light wire on it. I think they see more of the bait, the action of the bait, and it disguises the leaders. And these these wires give it vibration as it's going through the water. I think that actually, you know, it, they pay more attention to the actual baits than they do the wire. Plus, with the with having the, the, the fish head on the front, you know, it kind of to them it looks like a bait leading other baits. You know, so it's the beginning of the school, and then you have all that movement moving the water and distorting it, causing ripples in the water and everything. I think it disguises the wires a lot. Um, yeah, because like I said, I'm throwing 65 pound braid. I throw in Lake Ann where it's clear. And uh, other lakes, Douglas Lake's crystal clear. You can see down 15, 20 feet. And I'll throw it out there and I'm not getting any issues with, uh, with fish shying away. Now they still shy away if they follow it up to the boat like they do with a crankbait or, or a spinnerbait or something like that. You still, it's the same thing. A lot of people, you know, they pause or something like that. You'll get a lot of hookups not far from the boat. I mean, they'll, they'll grab it, but you'll see fish just you know, following it and going away. If that's the case, 
sometimes you need to just change up the, your reel speed or something like that or continue to follow and not hook it. You can turn around and just you know, do something a little different. You might want to back off that spot, throw it out there, let it, like I said, sink a little deeper, maybe not let it sink as far. Sometimes the fish, they either want to feed up or they want to feed down towards it. Uh, you just got to change up your speed until you get them to stop following. But once you hook one, try to pay real close attention, you know, which way you were throwing, how you were throwing, what depth you counted it down to. And a lot of times you can throw back air and six, eight, ten casts in a row, just bam, 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 and then you'll, you can catch up to, you know, 15, 20 fish in a row and have multiple hookups every time. It's almost like it doesn't spook them when you have two fish on. Because to them, it, it's almost like when a smallmouth try to take a bait out of another one's mouth. It doesn't spook the other fish. They kind of think you're just fighting for the fish or for the bait. And uh, it's just their way of feeding. And largemouth do the same thing. Talk about multiple largemouth, and that's the same thing where the, the other largemouth are coming up and trying to take it out of the other one's mouth just like it would with a spinner bait or a chatter bait or something like that. And they do the same thing, have multiple hookups with a largemouth. Anything else? Uh, this is the re re reverse clinch knot. Yeah, it's kind of vain. You're not going to throw a tie power on this baby. <laughs> yeah, I use your reverse clinch knot on this. It, it seems to work real well. I haven't lost anything on it, knock on wood. Uh, it seems to work real well for me. I usually go six times around, and that seems to work real well. And I try to use like a high speed reel too. I like a seven to one, uh, six three to one. You know, one of those reels. I want to, it's not like a crankbait, it's not going to wear you out from the, you know, the resistance. It doesn't have as much resistance in the water as you would think. I mean, it comes through the water real nice. And this is a 7 to 1 here, and it just, you don't have to reel it fast. You can just nice, slow, steady retrieve. Um, like I said, it's just something that, it takes some time to, like, learn all the different ways of fishing it. And it's like, soon as you think you have it figured out, and they stop biting, and you accidentally do something else, you'll, you'll trigger more bites. And it's just, it's amazing how well it works, it really is. Where they're feeding up in the rocks, and it's past fall. And I would catch a rockfish, and then I'd catch a 12 inch, 13 inch perch, white perch, on the same cast. So I had the whole food chain, you know, on one line. It was kind of cool to feel that. But uh, I don't know if the perch ate the rockfish was trying to eat it, or, or what happened with that one, but it was kind of interesting to have multiple species on one cast. Anybody have any questions? That's pretty much for it for me. If you guys have anything you want me to talk or you want to know about it, you want to see them up close, like I said, I have it over there at the booth. Uh, there's a lot of people selling around here. There's a lot of different versions of it. I recommend just getting one, take it out, try it out. Just try it different places, you know, see what works for you. You know, there's a lot of different things, a lot of different ways that it'll work. It's uh, it's something that's it's pretty cool for the fish, and it's a lot of fun. It's, it's something that a lot of people can catch fish on. Thanks a lot for everybody coming out.